Happy Friday. So uh, if you watched any of the news today, paid attention to the headlines or anything, you are forgiven if you felt a little nauseated when you realized today that the word of the day in today's news was once again going to be the word czar. This used to be a normal word, right? Before five years ago, this was a normal word. In regular conversation, regular political analysis, even talk about policy and getting stuff done, or even if you were just talking about Russian history, whatever, used to be a normal word. It did not give you that dread hairball feeling that as much as you might want to try to swallow another Fox and Friends discussion about the word czar, this one just wasn't going to go all the way down. It was going to get stuck right about there. And never, never, ever clear your airway. The word czar, if the word, it, I can't believe, if the word czar makes you have a bad feeling now, it is for a reason. It is because of what we went through as a country surrounding this word in 2009, in the first year of the Barack Obama presidency. Do you remember, do you remember what Fox News was like about this word in 2009? Do you remember what it was like, the whole czar thing back then? This is real, just to remind you, this is real. We did not make this up. We did not edit it in any way. This is from the television uh, in 2009. He's now appointed a border czar, another czar. You know, when I looked up czar in the dictionary or Googled it, the word that came up was king. And I was wondering to myself why we are having so many czars slash kings now in America. Does anyone have the answer for me? Every problem has a czar. King of the king of the border, king of drugs, king of the car problem. The king, of the czar, world. king of the world. Oh wait, that's Leonardo DiCaprio. Actually, when you think about it, czar is a, a Russian word. And we've actually, on the big screen over there, we put up uh, the Russian czars through history. Yeah, there's four of them. Uh, and then when you, when you uh, look at the number of czars we've got right now, it, and there's another four right there, and it keeps going on. When you look at the number of czars, in the United States. <laughs> Here's some interesting uh, headgear. Yeah, look, we've got a border czar screen left, and we've got a drug czar, we've got a... Uh, well, these are actually present-day people. Yeah, yeah with, with yeah, mustaches. Well, these are our czars. <laughs> these are members oh, of Barack well, I thought Obama's I lived in America. cabinet. Oh. He's installed a bunch of czars. Look at that. I thought I lived in America. In the big headline. And now we're Russia. Yeah, that is what it was like. That is why the word czar makes your stomach curdle like old milk in a dirty bottle left in the sun. Because, because that is how the whole czar idea got talked about on places like Fox News when we went through this last as a country in 2009. I should say, uh, as its redeeming value, though, is that that particular Fox News segment did actually lead to one of the greatest daily show rejoinders of all time. And God forbid all these czars we hear about Obama appointing, you know, the ones that never seemed to bother anyone when they were appointed during the Bush years. You know, when I looked up czar in the dictionary or Googled it, the word that came up was king. And I was wondering to myself why we are having so many czars slash kings now in America. Czar? <laughs> you didn't know what a czar was. How do you get a job on television? If you appear to be one of those people who need to pin their address to their coat so a stranger <laughs> can help them find their way home. Unless, 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 unless you're just dumbing yourself down to connect with an audience that you think sees intellect as an elitist flaw. <laughs> but that'd be easy to check. So I Googled Gretchen Carlson. <laughs> And, and guess what came up? She was valedictorian of her high school and went to Stanford and graduated with honors and spent time studying abroad at Oxford. Yeah, not the Mississippi Oxford. <laughs> the Europe one. <laughs> not to mention she won the Miss America crown in 1989 by doing this. <laughs> violin rendition of De Sarasate's Zigirnerweisen. <laughs> and if you know anything about Zigirnerweisen, you know that's one of the harder lisens <laughs> to Zigirner. Just because you're on the couch with Dra Jack Tripper and Janet doesn't mean you have to pretend <laughs> to be Chrissy. So 
I don't want to have to turn you on tomorrow and see you're actually surprised that the interior secretary is in charge of the outside stuff. <laughs> From now on, I want to see you give it 120%. So yes, the czar's thing was painfully stupid in a way that still hurts five years later, right? You can still feel how stupid that all was. But in the first year of the Obama presidency, the controversy over President Obama appointing point people, managers to coordinate the administration's response on specific policy matters, it really was a huge conservative media freakout and a huge Republican Party freakout in Washington. I mean, of all the dumb political stories of that first year of the Obama presidency, it was the biggest of the dumbest stories. The czars are the issue. We have about two dozen so-called czars, the pay czar, the car czar, all these czars in the White House. And that really is an affront to them. The President of the United States should cease and desist with the appointment of any additional czars. And what I've filed is H.R. 3569, which is called the SAC Act. This bill would sunset all czars effective December 31st of this year. You know, the Constitution of the United States um, doesn't get read often enough in this building. Nowhere in this document can I find the word czar. But who came up with czar? But Johnson, who came up with czar? Because it didn't really work out that well for the last official czar. So who came up with that? I could see what cards are because it rhymes. Well, but all well, the other ones just sort of fell to me on deaf ears. I think that the uh, the president just likes the term. I, I don't know, as you know, czarist Russia had 18 czars over a 300-year period of time, and maybe that's the model for this administration. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really. I don't really know. Maybe this president just likes the idea of turning us into Russia, and not the good Putin Russia either. The bad mustache, 300 years, 18 czars, kind of czars. That specific congressman there lamenting the sound of the word czar on Fox News, he is named Jack Kingston. He was one of the Republican members of Congress who filed legislation. Uh, it wasn't just the SAC Act. Uh, no, no the, the Jack Kingston legislation would have blocked the president's ability to appoint a czar in government, to appoint a person to coordinate the administration's action on an area of policy, which before 2009 was a totally uncontroversial technique of modern American governance that nobody talked about in a way that made you hate the sound of that word. That was our national experience in 2009, right? But 2009 really was sort of the heat of the moment around that. Into, into 2010 and then into 2011, uh, Republicans and our friends at, at the Fox News Channel, they didn't move on to other sources of excitement. Uh, there was the new Black Panther Party they got very excited about. It was for homeless guys who braid their beard hair in Philadelphia, who Fox News decided had secretly taken over the country. That pretty much riveted them for all of 2010. Only Fox News can tell you the truth about that. It was 2010. There was the Obamacare thing to get excited about as well. Uh, so uh, after 2009, they did get into other things, and they forgot a little bit after 2009 that they really did hate these czars so much, and that was the most important issue in Washington. They forgot enough about how much they hated czars that by the time the Ebola crisis rolled around this year in 2014, this same guy who introduced the anti-Czar bill, who said the whole reason we have czars is because President Obama just likes the sound of it because he wants to turn us into Russia. That same congressman this year just published this op-ed. We need an Ebola czar by Congressman Jack Kingston. And we know he wrote his own headline for this one because he posted it on his own congressional website under his own picture. We need an Ebola czar, says the man who tried to ban czars. Jerry Moran from Kansas, Frank Wolf from Virginia, they both co-sponsored the Jack Kingston anti-Czar bill. They just put out a joint statement demanding that the Obama administration uh, have an Ebola czar. Uh, John McCain, back in 2009, he had been smugly tweeting about the Romanovs and how Barack Obama had more czars than the actual czars had czars. That was 2009. John McCain went on CNN. Now, this year, to stare his former self in the face and say, Niet, Niet, das vidanya old John McCain, new John McCain, likes a czar. In fact, demands a czar. I would say that uh, we don't know exactly who's in charge. Uh, there has to be some kind of czar. There has to be some kind. I do not know whether this sort of thing is 
evidence of the fact that smart people do not go into politics anymore, or if this is the reason that smart people don't go into politics anymore, because our politics is like this. But this really is how stupid our politics is around issues like czars and stuff. So it almost goes without saying that after Republicans this year have been quite unselfconsciously clamoring for President Obama to appoint an Ebola czar, demanding that he appoint an Ebola czar, saying he's being irresponsible as long as he doesn't appoint an Ebola czar. Now that President Obama today appointed an Ebola czar, the Republican response, say it with me now, we don't need an Ebola czar. That was the response today from Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Other Republicans criticized President Obama today, not just for choosing a czar, but for choosing the czar he chose. He chose Ron Klain, uh, who's a longtime high-end uh, Washington management type. He is the chief of staff to Attorney General Janet Reno. He was chief of staff to Vice President Al Gore. He was chief of staff to Vice President Joe Biden. He was a top advisor to President Obama directly. All of that has led to Republican criticism that, well, he's not a doctor. To be clear, the Ebola czar is not supposed to be inserting IV lines or cleaning bedpans or even gene sequencing new doses of ZMAP. What the Ebola czar is supposed to do is coordinate all the different parts of the administration's government response to the Ebola crisis. The person who had the closest thing to this job before Ron Klain was named to it today was Lisa Monaco, who's the top advisor to the president on homeland security and counterterrorism issues. Uh, she and Susan Rice, the national security advisor, were basically taking on this role of coordinating the administration's response to Ebola. But these two high-ranking officials do have other stuff to do, given that they are the top officials in the administration on all national security, homeland security, and counterterrorism issues. A White House official put out a statement today explaining that President Obama is pleased with how Lisa Monaco and Susan Rice have done thus far in their work coordinating the response to Ebola, but, quote, given their management of other national and homeland security priorities, additional bandwidth will further enhance the government's Ebola response. So, so that is the idea, to bring more management brain, essentially more, more bandwidth, more coordinating capacity to the response by making one person responsible for knowing all the different things that the government is doing. And also, if you call him a czar, he can be a king. He can be the king of this deadly virus. Or at least he will be the next time you watch Fox News. I'm telling you this is all coming back. So it's all coming back. So, so there's, there's a, a rich vein of profound stupidity on issues like this when they get discussed in Washington, right? On issues like this in the insult sphere that we call policy-free political complaint, otherwise known as Congress, is on TV and in recess. But, but despite that stupidity in the way partisans fight about this stuff, there is the real matter of getting stuff done about this very real crisis. And if we put aside all of the, I Googled it, it's a king, put a mustache on him, ban czars, appoint a czar, you appointed a czar. If we put aside all of this nonsense, if you put that stupidity aside, is picking a point person, somebody to coordinate the administration's response on a specific policy matter, is that, in fact, a good way to ensure that good policy is made and smart actions are taken on that policy matter? I mean, historically speaking, if this has been done, not just in the Obama administration, not just in the previous administration, but in lots of administrations throughout this century and the last, what do we know from that experience about whether or not this is a good way to manage response to difficult stuff? Because the Ebola crisis is difficult stuff. It is a difficult, complicated, fast-changing, very challenging thing that brings out the worst in everyone. Is it a good thing that somebody like Ron Klain's, an experienced management guy who knows everybody in government, is it smart, historically speaking, to put somebody like that in charge of a big government response like this? What do we know about how to predict whether this will work?